Hey everyone, so welcome back. We're going through our 101 marketing tips and you can do these tips with zero dollars. So it's a zero dollar marketing spend for each of these tips. So we talked about social media. If you haven't checked out that video, please check that out. That was the previous section. I had 28 tips there. And now we're gonna go through blogging. I've got 10 tips here to help you out with your blogging strategy. So number one, guest post for the top blogs in your niche or relevant niche. So guest posting is one of these underutilized approaches to expanding someone's blog. But if you were to look at the top 100 blogs in your niche and create content relevant to them and just reach out and say, hey, would you mind posting this or whatnot? That's going to help take their traffic and get their traffic to your site. So great little tip. It doesn't cost a thing. Number two, start a blog with WordPress or Medium. So this is a given. You need some sort of a website where you can write your blog. WordPress is the gold standard. It's been around for years and it powers well, probably 30% of the, the internet nowadays. Um, it's just a, the gold standard. I have other WordPress videos as well that you should definitely check out in my channel. It kind of helps you navigate through that uh, and then medium is the new player medium is a very modern approach um, and it just focuses on the writing so if you don't plan on having a full-blown website medium is a another interesting approach i would recommend if you plan on being serious and you want to be a professional wordpress is the the growing platform and has always been the, the platform of choice so number three, invite others to write on your blog. So, you know, you guest posted for others. Now try inviting others to see if they would guest author on your blog. And what happens is once they've written on your blog, maybe they'll share the post with their community. And it's just another great way to get people to check, check out your blog is that you have other influencers writing for you. Might be difficult to convince people at first. So try to find writers who are just interested in expanding their, their blog as well. Maybe somebody going along the same path as you. Number four, write a press release for your local newspaper and then include a link to your website. So yes, local newspaper, it sounds like kind of an old technique, but it's fascinating how many people are actually checking out uh, the local news. Now, the local newspaper will actually take the article and perhaps post it on their website as well. So it kind of has multiple exposure or it will show up, you know, just in the, in the paper itself. But regardless, um, having a bio at the end with a link to your website is great exposure. And, uh, you know, if you've got something new that's happening at, at your company, then this is a great little way to, to announce a launch and, uh, it doesn't take much because if you write the article for the editor, all the editor has to do is proofread and say, hey, that sounds good. I will post this for you. You're taking all the headaches away from them and uh, it helps with their newspaper and their content. Number five, use headers in your blog to break up long form content, just like this guide. So um, this 101 marketing tips, I've kind of segmented it out by uh, marketing section as well as you know bullet points here uh, numbered numbered points so this is kind of a nice way to make it easy to read and somebody can easily refer to this down the road and that's what you maybe want to do with your content because if you're creating a long piece of content it's just all like one paragraph and it's like ugh, nobody's going to want to read that but if you chunk it out then people are more likely to continue reading your blog and that helps just with the engagement and that's what you want is to people to have people checking out your website and staying on the page for as long as possible number six Interview your staff, customers, and other experts, and then publish your findings on your blog, vlog, or podcast. So if you can do any kind of interviews, then it's another content piece that you can easily post on your blog. Podcasts are a new way of just capturing audio. I mean, if you've got a phone, you can record with your voice memos, the conversation that's happening 
Uh, if you are into YouTube, you can have a daily life thing and have it on your vlog. Uh, if you've got a blog, you can take your videos, your podcast, share it on your blog. Your blog is kind of like a hub of where you can put all of your content. So um, definitely just another way to create some content and publish it. Number seven, create a how-to series and publish and share. How-to videos and, and write-ups are fantastic. Uh, you can do a how-to series on your niche and just kind of own that area and just create as much as possible around that. Fantastic way to leverage your knowledge. Number eight, capture behind the scenes video footage and share. So if you've got any kind of footage that would be valuable, it could even be a tour of your office, you could totally record that and put it on your blog or on YouTube and people will check that out. They want to see what's happening behind the scenes. Number nine, have staff handle your content marketing if they are a millennial crowd. Train them on best practices. So millennials, they're typically at work and they're on their Facebook and maybe they're you know on their Snapchat. Why not get them involved with your company page and see if they can maybe create content for you while they're doing that? Because what happens is they can share what they're creating with their fans. So why not take advantage of that? Why not get them to, to work on your page? And they'll actually be interested in coming to work if they get to work on this content marketing piece. I think they'll be really excited to take on this responsibility. And uh, with just a little bit of training, you can help them out. Number 10, write 500 to 800 words of quality content on your blog consistently. This will boost your SEO organically. So this is kind of the best practice, 500 to 800 words. I've seen other bloggers where they can like cut it down to very little words. And I've seen bloggers do thousands of words. Uh, you know, 500 to 800 is the sweet spot, but you know, it's really kind of open to, uh, creativity for you. So don't let this be kind of a, a restriction, but it's certainly kind of a best practice. Uh, if you can create quality content and have a consistent schedule, whether it be once a week, once every couple of days, once a month, I mean, just have a consistent schedule. Um, that's going to help with your ranking on Google because that means you're going to show up more. You know, it just means, hey, wow, this site is active. We'll need to have it on the kind of the search rankings. So keep that in mind as you're creating content. So that rounds out our top 10. Stay tuned for the next video because we'll be talking about digital marketing strategies. Thanks for checking the video out.